When Harry and Meghan named their daughter Lilibet, it was supposed to be a tribute to Queen Elizabeth. So why was she reportedly furious? Prince Harry's romantic life was always put under the microscope, with many royalists believing that he would eventually tie the knot with his long-term girlfriend, Chelsea Davy. However, it wasn't meant to be, and Meghan Markle ultimately captured the heart of the prince for good. As you might expect, interest in the couple was widespread when they first started dating, but the former Suits actor didn't exactly keep her cards close to her chest. One of Meghan's first run-ins with the palace was when she gave an interview to Vanity Fair in 2017 that blew the lid off their romance before Meghan even had a ring on her finger. In a cover story with the headline, Wild About Harry, the Hollywood starlet didn't hold back when asked about her entanglement with the prince, stating, We're a couple. We're in love. Writer Tom Bauer claimed in his book, Revenge, that the interview sparked rage at Buckingham Palace. Like a thunderclap, the interview triggered sensational reactions. Meghan had used her relationship with Harry to promote herself. While being a senior member of the royal family isn't an easy job for anyone, Harry and Meghan had a particularly rough go of it because of the constant media scrutiny and disagreements behind closed doors. Nevertheless, fans never expected them to give it up altogether, so when the pair announced they would be stepping down as senior royals in 2020, the shock resonated around the world. Of course, no one felt it more than Harry's own grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II. At the time of the couple's statement, BBC correspondent Johnny Diamond tweeted, BBC understands that no other member of the royal family was consulted before Harry and Meghan issued their personal statement tonight. The palace is understood to be disappointed. Multiple headlines at the time suggested that the palace's main bone of contention was that they were not given prior warning about the couple's statement before they released it, meaning the royal family had no time to prepare for one of the biggest royal upsets of all time. Just when the palace thought things couldn't get any worse, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle gave a televised interview to Oprah Winfrey. The 2021 sit-down sparked outrage among royalists, with many believing Harry and Meghan were attention-seeking and creating issues for the royal institution unnecessarily. And if that wasn't enough, the palace was reportedly furious when presenter Gail King let slip some private information while on the news programme CBS This Morning after the interview had aired. When asked by her co-presenters if she had spoken to the couple following the interview, King confessed, I did actually call them to see how they are feeling, and it's true. Harry has talked to his brother and he has talked to his father too. The word I was given was that those conversations were not productive. Experts were quick to condemn Harry and Meghan for sharing this private conversation with King, with royal biographer Penny Juna stating it was a shocking breach of trust that would make the palace worry that anything they say would become public news. Even in their infamous interview with Oprah Winfrey, Meghan was quick to say that Harry's grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, had always been wonderful to her. Perhaps it's this connection that caused the couple to call their youngest child Lilibet. This sweet moniker was actually a nickname given to the Queen when she was a youngster, so there was no doubt it paid homage to the monarch. But the BBC reported that a palace insider told them the couple failed to ask Elizabeth for permission to use the name. Of course, Harry and Meghan's spokesperson denied this. We've been through so much, and that we, like any parent, deserves to just welcome their child into the world peacefully. But the issue resurfaced again in early 2024 when the Daily Mail began to serialize the book Charles III, New King, New Court, The Inside Story by Robert Hardman. According to Hardman, a palace aide claimed Elizabeth was, quote, as angry as I'd ever seen her over the news. Daily Mail writer Rebecca English also claimed she was told by aides that Elizabeth said, I don't own the palaces, I don't own the paintings, the only thing I own is my name, and now they've taken that. If the palace thought things would settle down after the Oprah Winfrey interview, they were sadly mistaken. After their split from the royal family, Harry and Meghan signed an incredibly lucrative deal with streaming giant Netflix. Worth $100 million, the couple was under contract to produce several shows for the company. One of these was a docuseries based on their relationship and separation from The Firm, titled Harry and Meghan. The show dropped in 2022 and it caused quite the stir. As you might expect, the palace wasn't exactly thrilled at having to defend itself over the couple's claims yet again. The surprise was that the first bone of contention was over the title card at the start of the documentary, which claimed that the royal family had declined the opportunity to comment. The morning after the show debuted, palace sources reportedly reached out to royal reporters to set the record straight. Daily Mail journalist Rebecca English tweeted, Contrary to claims by the makers of the Netflix documentary, I understand neither Buckingham or Kensington Palace or any members of the royal family were approached for comment on the content of the series. The disagreement continued as a Netflix source doubled down on the initial claim, saying both Prince William and King Charles were notified but never responded. 
Ever since her relationship with Prince William turned serious, Princess Catherine has been one of the best-loved members of the royal family. When rumours of a feud between Meghan Markle and Catherine emerged, it was sensational to say the least. Rumblings of a disagreement over Princess Charlotte's bridesmaid outfit for Meghan and Prince Harry's 2018 wedding surfaced, which were later confirmed by Meghan in her interview with Oprah Winfrey. While newspapers reported that Meghan was at fault, Meghan told Oprah it was actually Catherine who upset her, but the royal family refused to correct the false media narrative. Everyone in the institution knew it wasn't so true. So why didn't somebody just say that? It's a good question. It was Prince Harry's account of the fallout that ruffled royal feathers, though. The prince talked about the incident in his memoir, Spare, and even went so far as to reveal private text messages between Catherine and his wife. It was this move that caused insiders to tell Us Weekly that the palace, quote, does not love that the private exchange was made public. Just because Prince Harry and Meghan Markle left the royal family, it doesn't mean their publicity train stopped. The couple have been more active in the media than ever, not only with their own projects, but also to support good causes. Harry surprised fans when he appeared on actor Dax Shepard's popular podcast, Armchair Expert, in 2021. The candid talk focused on Harry's advocacy for mental health and his own therapy journey, which he admitted was spurred on by Meghan recognizing a need for him to talk to someone. It's certainly an honorable cause, so why exactly would the palace be bothered? As it turns out, Harry's appearance on the podcast coincided with Prince William and Princess Catherine's own efforts for Mental Health Week. The future king was reportedly out and about making appearances in the UK at the time, but his brother's discussions stole the spotlight. A source told The Times that the palace was left agitated and disappointed, explaining, It was such a lovely day for the Cambridges. It is a shame that it got usurped by what Harry had to say. Nobody is shocked anymore. It is more, here we go again. But you should be told that these grievances should be aired in the privacy of your own home. While the Oprah Winfrey interview raised eyebrows for multiple reasons, one of the biggest revelations was Harry and Meghan's claim that certain members of the institution expressed concern over the skin color of their firstborn, Archie. At the time, Meghan explained that there were, quote, concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. Winfrey then questioned whether Harry's family was worried their son would be too brown. If that's the assumption you're making, I think that feels like a pretty safe one. The pair wouldn't reveal which members of the family discussed it, leaving many to speculate. It wasn't until late 2023 that the question appeared to be answered. In a Dutch version of the book Endgame, written by Harry and Meghan's biographer Omid Scobie, the royals were named as Princess Catherine and King Charles. Scobie claimed that this was actually a translation error, and the books were recalled to correct it. But two royal sources told LBC that they believe the names must have originated from Meghan herself, calling it a nasty and deliberate attack. The death of Queen Elizabeth II in 2022 marked the end of an era that had seen the British public through some turbulent times. Though it was a sad day, her death wasn't entirely unexpected. The events of the monarch's final hours have been widely discussed since then, with her immediate family members rushing to be by her side during her final hours. Some made it to the Queen's Scottish residence Balmoral sooner than others. While Prince Harry and Meghan Markle happened to be in the UK at the time, Harry didn't make it to Balmoral until after his grandmother's death. Journalist and royal biographer Omid Scobie alleged that Harry had tried to contact his brother several times on Elizabeth's last day, but that his brother ignored him. Scobie's claims didn't sit well with the palace, with a source telling the mirror, it appears no matter what happens behind closed doors, even in a time of such pain and grief, that where the royal family are concerned it will one day emerge, it only takes a few months for the knives to come out again and the wounds to be opened up. Though the report came from Scobie, the fingers were ultimately pointed again at Harry and Meghan due to the fact that Meghan has provided information to Scobie in the past.